Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another crafting project today. Now I know I said that the cicada gown was all finished up, and, and technically it is. I'm not counting this as an official part of that project because this is something that you could use for costuming applications, but also for decorating hats or just as a brooch, although this one might be a little bit oversized for like a normal brooch, but just one flower on its own would be pretty like as a boutonniere or like corsage kind of situation. Um, so this flower making I felt was almost separate from the costuming because this could be used for costuming or regular applications. Of course, I don't have any of the fancy tools that you may have seen for making silk flowers. Um, there's kind of quite a lot of viral videos of making flowers online. I've noticed when I started researching the, t the subject here, but uh, I didn't have any of the fancy tools and I didn't have time to buy the fancy tools. I do kind of want some. Should I get flower making tools and do more flower making? You can let me know. But I did have a few household items that I thought could stand in for fancy flower making tools and I made it work. So today I'm going to show you how to make silk roses like these with things you may already have in your house. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, here are some materials that I've collected from around my sewing room here. The only things I bought new for this rose project basically were the, the um, bag of wires you can see in the bottom of the screen and the green floral tape here. Floral tape is kind of like washi tape, only it's a little bit sticky on each side and it's very thin. Um, you'll see how I use that later. It's definitely optional and you could use any kind of wire for what we're about to do today. Um, I just bought floristry wire and floristry tape um, on Amazon real quick. Um, of course, I don't like shopping with Amazon, but I did need these next day and they got them to me next day, which was nice. Then I have some poster board and a pencil here to cut out templates for my flower petals later. Then I have some cotton balls from up underneath the bathroom sink. I'm going to use a little bit of cotton for this later. And then I have scraps of taffeta fabric here. Of course, this is silk taffeta. I don't like the method for flower making with polyester fabrics and polyester ribbon is different. This is for making uh, this method I'll, show you, I'll be showing you today works best with silk fabrics. Um, you can work with anything from a taffeta in, and then anything thinner than that. I don't know if this will work with like a chiffon, but it will certainly work with the stiffer silks like taffeta or like organza, for example. And then um, silk crepes are often used for flower making, so those often work quite well also. And then I have fabric scissors, of course, for being able to cut out my petals later. And then I have a big jug of PVA glue here. Now, often when flowers are made in the historic past and even still now, it, um, they, people use gelatin to stiffen the fabric, but of course that is not very vegan friendly and gelatin is really quite creepy and weird, so I'm not gonna use it. You can also use watered down PVA glue, so that is what I will be doing today. And luckily for me, I just so happen to have just bought this big jug of PVA glue for gluing together some archival textile storage boxes, so I had this big jug of it around that I could use for this project as well. And then to heat up my tools later, I'm just going to be using some tea light candles. You can also use an iron and kind of balance tools under an iron to heat them up, but I have some tea light candles to uh, use the flame to heat up my tools later, and then of course I will need a needle and thread later as well. But here I have a plastic bowl filled with about three cups of warm water and a third of a cup of the PVA glue. So I've just watered down white glue for this. Um, you can search PVA glue. A lot of glues are PVA glue. I think it's what's in wood glue. It's I think what tacky glue is made out of. Elmer's glue is technically a PVA glue, but I had just like straight up white glue around. So that's what I ended up using. Um, do your Googling. You may have something in the house that will work already. But here I have um, about three cups of warm water, one third cup of the PVA um, dissolved in that. And here I'm just dunking a piece of silk into that solution. Um, it feels very wrong to do this. It's like the opposite of doing laundry. And of course you're not even supposed to get silk wet at all. So to stick it in a bowl of glue water feels very strange, but you're gonna go ahead and get that fully saturated and then wring it out as much as you can here. And of course your hands will be a little bit sticky and feel slimy now and so will this fabric but make sure this is fully saturated in the glue and then straighten it back out and then i hung up these pieces over like wire hangers from the dry cleaners just like cheap hangers so that i could hang these outside in the uh, wintry i guess it's supposed to be spring but sometimes it's snowing here so in the winter spring breeze outside to let these dry quickly um, so i just did several scraps this same way and then hung them from hangers you can see here, I'm trying to show you, but the frame is not working with me. Here, I just have these pinned to a hanger so I can hang them up outside like a very strange wind chime to fully dry. So I'm just pinning these to the hanger like so. And all, all my scraps are like a strange shape because this is all leftover silk at the end of my project here. But with my very wrinkly pieces of dried stiffened silk here, I can go ahead and press those a little bit flatter. And I'm using a little bit of steam here even even though we want them to be stiff, we don't want them to be super wrinkly like that. So I'm just gonna 
press my scraps now that they are dry. It did take just a couple of hours to dry outside, so this is the same day here. And you can see in the top of the screen I have some petal shapes cut out of poster board to use as templates for cutting my petals out here. I'm going to cut out several different sizes. Basically, you just want to graduate the sizes of your petals so you have several sizes to work with, starting about the size of a US quarter and then working up to like a sand dollar, kind of almost maybe two and a half, three inch size petal. But the biggest thing about cutting these out is you want to cut them out on the bias. So I have a strip of fabric cut and lined up here so that it's folded up on itself so I can cut many petals at once, but these are cut on the bias. So at the 45 degree angle, or put the point of the petal at the 45 degree angle of your fabric so that they are cut on the bias and can stretch in a minute here when we are forming these into shape, I suppose. But just cut out many of each size. Of course, if you're only making one flower, you're only going to need like maybe eight or ten max petals of each size but I'm making several flowers, so I'm cutting out a bunch here. And it's easiest to kind of layer up the fabric in a strip like that. Again, I am paying attention to grain so that I can make sure that I'm cutting these out with um, the 45 degree angle, the bias. So I am trying to be conscious of that, but I'm just cutting out a bunch of petals from all my scraps of silk here. And I'm just using a very simple like teardrop petal shape here. You can do different shapes of petals for different flowers. And to shape these flowers, I'm going to use several different little metal tools I gathered from around the house, including a couple of pairs of tweezers here. So whatever metal tweezers you have around. Again, this pair here in my hand, I picked up on Amazon and got overnighted to me um, just so I could have a set of tweezers just for this. It's nice to have something with a round end on it. And then this is a melon baller. That's right, for making fruit salad. <laughs> and uh, it's the best tool for this job. So if you can get yourself a melon baller, that is the best practice. But of course, a spoon is similar enough that it will work, but I think a melon baller is the closest tool that you may be able to have in your house to what actual flower tools look like. If you've ever seen flower making tools, they are usually like a round ball of metal on the end of a wand um, and or like a half, a half circle of metal. Um, so this is not that dissimilar from a flower making tool really. And I just had that, idea, that thought, that connection one day where I was like, you know what? I bet you I could use a melon baller to do that. And uh, it is indeed possible. So you can grab one of these at the thrift store online, or you may already have one. And here I'm just heating it up over a tea light candle, basically, to get this hot. So this, is, this was my setup. Um, most of the flower tools, I believe, you plug into the wall and they heat up like a curling iron or something like that. But of course, I didn't have those. I just had a melon baller. And the melon baller has two different sizes on it, so it has one size that works better for large petals like this, and the other side is smaller and works best for smaller petals. But uh, just heating that up over the flame using a teacup um, as a stand there, as you saw, but you just make sure that gets nice and piping hot. And then I have a little pillow here. You could use any pillow. I mean, probably not like a nice one that you wouldn't mind. Like you may scorch it if you get this real hot. I don't know. I don't think a tea light could do that for you. I don't think you could get hot enough to do that. But I'm just grabbing each little petal one at a time here and pressing the heated melon baller into the petal to give it this rounded shape. You're just basically ironing this, but instead of ironing something flat, you're ironing it into shape. So just grab that heated tool, press down on the petal, scooch it around a little bit, and uh, impress it with the curved shape. So just go ahead and curl all my petals here or curve all my petals here. And then the larger petals, of course, the melon baller is a little bit too small for, so I just scooch it around even more. And you know, each one doesn't have to be perfect, especially because we're creating something that is supposed to mimic nature, where, um, you know, each thing is very beautiful, but not necessarily perfect when you look up close. So with my larger petals here, I just curved them or curled them as best I could. And then with the tweezers here, we are going to finish our petals by curling the edges in the opposite direction. So I can heat up the ends of my tweezers here. Again, the ends of these tweezers are quite rounded, which made them good for this. I picked these up for maybe eight or ten dollars on Amazon again. And you just take the edge of your petal and then roll them backwards like this with your heated tweezers. And usually it takes about three or four turns on a small petal and then several turns on a large petal. And suddenly you have something that looks very like a rose petal, which is uh, exactly what we're going for, you know? Melon ballers and tweezers. Who needs fancy tools? So for the larger petals like this, I am just again heating up the end of my tweezer in the flame, which is why these tweezers are like burnt, uh, whatever like coating they had to protect the metal, obviously I burnt to a crispier, but that's alright. 
but I just get the end of the tweezer hot and roll the edges like so and hold it for a second just make sure it's good and sort of the more irritating part about this is just having to reheat the tool over and over again but it is possible to do it this way so just heat that up in the flame and go around the edges of your petals and roll them all backwards so that they are curling away from the cupped side of the petal I suppose like so um, using you know china and a spode teacup as a stand optional but uh, you know So once you have all of your petals shaped into little, uh, you know, cups and the edges folded back, you can take your wire, a needle and thread, and a bit of cotton to make your flower here. So I'm just taking a bit of a cotton ball that I've pulled apart and sandwiching it in between or pinching it between a bit of wire, like so. And then you just roll the cotton together. Cotton sticks with itself quite well because of the way that cotton fibers are shaped. And just making this little kind of bud out of cotton, out of a cotton bud. Then I take one of the kind of medium-sized petals here, and I'm just going to fold it over that piece of cotton quite roughly and start stitching it down. These stitches are not precise or perfect in any way. They're quite messy, actually. So I'm just going to messily stitch this petal over that piece of cotton. The cotton is just there as a base for us to be able to stitch into, um, and it works quite well for that. I just want to make sure that the end of this is folded over so it's like tight petals in the middle of a rose is what we're trying to mimic here. But I can just roll the little piece of silk around the rest of my cotton here. None of this will be seen in the end. So again, it can be quite messy. I am using black Guterman silk thread here on a sewing needle. Not a beading needle this time, as we know. Lately I've been talking about how much I use beading needles, but this time it is just a regular sewing needle. We need the stability here. And so I'm going to make sure my needle comes out back up towards the top of this, I don't know, central petal situation and I'm going to grab the smallest size of petal and start sewing these on. So I'm just going to pinch that near the end. You can see I'm about half a half inch away from the end and you want this to be about two inches long or so so you have room to make your flower here. Of course it depends on what size of flower you're trying to make. Um, so I sewed one petal on. I'm just taking a tiny stitch down here at the bottom of the petal and then I'm going to start uh, layering these on over the joins. So after you have a few going Start laying, laying them on, the new petals on, over the joins in the last few, just so it starts to spiral outward like petals do. So I'm just kind of, instead of lining them up right next to one another, I'm lining them up over the edges of the two previous, if that makes any sort of sense. Hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Um, but again, I'm just roughly stitching these on near the edge, uh, the bottom of the petal. That way they can be, the flower can kind of move around a little bit. So they're fully secured, but you know, they blow around in the wind and uh, are reshapable kind of by your hand if you need to reshape your flower here. But of course, like if you just use a bunch of these small petals, you can stop there and end up with a small flower. But I'm going to start using larger petals, larger and larger petals and sewing them further and further down my flower as we go. But I'm using maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe eight or ten of the tiniest petal size here. You don't need this many. You probably get away with five or six as well, especially if you're doing a smaller flower. But I'll go up to the next size here and just start stitching those on the same way, kind of spiraling around my flower here. And again, a different shape of petal will give you a completely different looking flower. Um, there are a ton. I mean, this seems to be quite a large hobby, flower making. Um, and people hand paint them and do amazing silk flowers, um, is what I quickly learned when searching how to make silk flower on YouTube. There are a great many videos about this and it seems to be quite a large hobby in both Japan and Russia so there are many many videos out there and not all of them in English of course but if you can just watch and see what people are doing you can learn how to make all different sorts of flowers it seems but this is just a simple rose which of course is quite practical but I'm just layering on my petals sometimes you can see here I'm like threading a petal on almost like a bead threading it on to my thread and then scooching it up to the flower and then taking a couple stitches to hold it down but I cut out several different I think I have five different sizes of petals here um, the last size I cut out was actually too large to really properly curl with that melon baller so I had to give up on making absolutely gigantic roses but you know maybe if you had an ice cream scoop and a big candle you could make it happen I'm not saying it's impossible but just stitching these on going around layering them up Again, you can use 
different types of silk for this, including organza, which is quite sheer, and other lighter weight silks. I don't think anything, I don't know, I'm not sure if you could do this with like a dupioni, but it's not, I mean, if it was a lighter weight, I don't see why not. You can certainly do it with like a shantung, because that's usually a little bit lighter of a weight. And you can see here, it works quite well with this taffeta from Silk Baron, of course. This is the colorway Alphaba, for those who are if this is your first video on my channel, I'm so sorry because I really kind of just jumped in. Um, but I've been working on a costume in a Victorian costume in this same color of silk, and these were my last few scraps, so I decided to go ahead and try and make a big corsage brooch situation out of these. But I'm just layering on the next size of petal here, and I've sped up our footage because, you know, we're, I'm just doing the same thing over and over again here. Just layering the petals around. Um, the wider you get out, the easier it is to lay them in like a spiral around, so you're just layering one over the other, one over the other as you go around, and maybe do two rows of like five or six for each petal size. Seems to be a good base, but again, I'm slowly sliding down the like cylindrical base we started with, like the sort of bud that we started with. So I'm have less and less room on my flower. Of course, if I were to run out of room, I could sew on no more further petals, but that's right. Now we're switching to a very large size of petal here, so I have to take a couple of stitches out of each, but again, I'm just trying to layer them over the seams in the back here and taking a few stitches as needed. Again, these are just messy stitches. No need to be precise. It's all organic after all. Well, it's completely inorganic. We're mimicking nature here. Just sewing on more and more petals here. Really the, you know, the shaping we did with the melon baller and <laughs> tweezer technique is really what's making this come together so quickly and uh, so, I guess, genuinely rose-like looking, which is nice. Though turning with the wire, really turning the petals back like that really gives it such a lifelike appearance. And sometimes I will just tie off my thread and start a new one, of course, because I'll run it out. Uh, run out of thread. And this is my last kind of row of petals here, these very large petals. Hopefully you can see how this was coming together. Started taking um, stitches that were kind of all the way around, but stitching them all down here next to the base really means that the petals retain a lot of like freedom of movement, so I can shape them however I need them, like lay it down however I need to in the end when it comes to sewing these onto, you know, a hat or whatever I end up using them for. I am just doubling this thread here, as you can see. So on the last few petals here, and then I will find some leaves nearby to use as well. Now you could cut out and shape leaves as well. I've heard um, you can use a butter knife heated up to shape leaves, but I couldn't get it to work for me, so I ended, ended up using some vintage millinery leaves that I did have in stock here. So this is another thing where you may not have things like this laying around. I mean, if you're me, you do. So uh, every time I order I usually order millinery flowers, that's why. And I was kind of kicking myself for forgetting to order flowers for this costume that I was working on. And then I was like, you know what? I can just make some to match. And so that's how this whole idea started really is because I forgot to order some black silk roses because I usually buy vintage millinery flowers. But now that I know how to make them, what a dangerous game we've, we've opened up here. But I'm just um, using my thread that's already attached to my flower to wind all the wires or bind all the wires of these various things together. So I have my leaves attached now, just kind of arranged how I like, and then I can um, tie off my thread here, a couple of knots. And then I did end up covering this with um, the floral tape, which I'll show you in a minute as well. But here's, you know, this rose. I'm actually going to attach these to a piece of felt, and then I will pin that felt to my costume itself. That way these are removable. But again, here I'm just going to show you one more time how these come together. I'm going to go ahead and link um, to a video like an unlisted video of how to make this rose that I'm showing you here in real time. So um, it does take maybe 20 minutes to make one of these, or at least 20 or 30 minutes to make one of these and hand stitch everything together. So of course I have my footage quite sped up here, but if you want to watch me make one of these in real time, I'm not gonna put music to that video. It's just gonna be me 
silently making flowers, so play your own music in the background if you'd like to watch me make one of these in real time. So I will link to that video in the description of this one if you would like to watch this footage completely like in full and not sped up. So I will include that as well. Of course, you can always on YouTube either speed up the video or slow down the video down in settings. And um, I watch a lot of videos at two times speed, especially when I'm watching my own videos to make sure that I, I didn't make any like vital mistakes in editing. Once I have them uploaded onto YouTube, I'll watch them in two times speed and be like, okay, is everything all right? <laughs> Which I talk quite quickly normally. I, I, I've gotten in trouble before at least for talking fast. But now I, I feel like I don't talk fast anymore. Now I talk in my normal like stunted weird speech pattern that some people find very irritating and they love letting me know that. <sighs> But for, for those of you, whoever leave a comment, if you've ever left a comment saying that you like my voice, thank you, because there are several people who leave comments that say that they do not like it so much. So you're counteracting those and I appreciate it. But here's another rose with a couple more leaves. I'll just, again, wind my wires together and bind them with this thread. And then you'll see me here use the floral tape. So hold on one second, I'll try to get this tied off. I liked these leaves having a little bit of a different color and contrast and adding a little bit of Something, something different here as well. Luckily I had bought these leaves for making the bonnet I made earlier in the year. I'll put a card up to that if you'd like to watch me make a Victorian bonnet as well. Where I did use vintage flowers, but now, now I know how to make them. What a dangerous game. But this tape really just sticks to itself, so you just kind of hold it and then twist the flower like so to cover and bind the wires together. And again, this tape is quite sticky, so it sticks to itself and, and it remains kind of sticky. And it makes your fingers sticky, so you'll have to wash your hands in between flowers, basically. But now that all my flowers are finished, I kind of just twisted the wires in the back into little loops, and then stitched those loops down to a piece of felt here, and just layered my flowers up. I ended up using three for the corsage on the Cicada Gown Ball Bodice. And now, of course, this is removable, so I can wear it like a giant brooch. And I can't wait to, honestly, wear it out and about. I love a giant brooch in general, so to have a completely custom floral corsage like this is uh, going to be fun. And especially because in the 1940s and 50s, big sprays of flowers worn like at the top of your dress or even like at your wrist, like a corsage or like a boutonniere, those kind of things, were sort of a thing, especially for like dances or special events. A lot of times fresh flowers were used for that kind of thing, but also millinery flowers like these. So it's actually a very retro thing to have as well. And also the, you know, wearing flowers in the hair was a big deal as well. Throughout the centuries, really. But I'm just layering in some more of these leaves in here as well, just to fill in any blank spaces. And because these petals are just loosely stitched on at the bottom, they are quite positionable. So if there's any like holes in the arrangement, I can fold a few petals down and like fill in any blank space, which is nice. And I didn't actually have any pin backs for this, which is unfortunate. I need to buy some pin backs just to have on hand in the craft room here. So I was having to use a safety pin, which is less than ideal. But again, a lot of this is just using what I had on hand or what I could get overnighted from Amazon. And I forgot to grab pin backs. So I need to get some of those. <laughs> but I'm just sewing this down to a piece of felt. And then I'll sew this piece of felt onto the other piece of felt, just because that was what was going to be easiest. And so here's my finished floral arrangement, basically, <laughs> that I can put onto my shoulder of my finished cicada gown ball bodice here. So that was how I made some silk taffeta roses to embellish my cicada gown ball bodice costume and of course any other outfit I decide to pin this onto. I hope you all enjoyed seeing how these flowers came together. If you'd like to see me make more things like this in the future, feel free to let me know. Should I buy the fancy flower tools? It would make this a lot easier, I have to say. The, the thing that takes the longest about this is waiting for the tools to heat up again because, uh, you know, they're not like plugged into anything like a curling iron which is how the fancy real flower making tools are. They're like soldering irons almost where you can just plug it in and it like stays hot, which I think would make this whole process go a lot faster. So if you'd like to see me try using the real flower making tools someday in the future, let me know and then I'll feel better about buying some. Thank you as always for watching this video today and I'll see you again here real soon. Bye.